everyone. We are happy to have you join us on this episode of the Yabo Voice. And this is a monthly webinar that comes from the stable of the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital of Yabo, Lagos. And this month, oh, we have something very unique for us. Again, because it's also the Suicide Awareness Month. And if you check our platforms, you would have seen that we had been creating awareness and talking so much about suicide prevention, especially because the team this year is creating hope uh, for everyone around. Yes, today's topic is very germane and susceptible to what we are going through as a nation and as individuals. But before I run off, I want to invite the medical director and the hour head of Yabo Voice, Dr. Lubinga Adekile Oweye, to formally welcome us to this episode of the Yabo Voice webinar. Over to you, medical director, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Kemi Akinsuyesi. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to warmly welcome you to this month's edition of webinar by Yabo Voice. Yaba Voice is a social media platform of Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital Yaba Lagos of mental health education, advocacy, and community outreach. It is a platform through which they are to create awareness and educate the populace on topical mental health issues. Today's topic is suicide stemming the fight and creating hope through action. Suicide, stemming the fight and creating hope through action. action. As we all know, suicide is a major public health problem, far-reaching social, emotional, and economic consequences. It is estimated that there are currently more than 700,000 suicides per year worldwide. And we know that each suicide profoundly affects many more people. In today's webinar, many questions will be addressed. For instance, All right, um, let's just give the medical director some few minutes. I'm sure we'll be back um, the technical each. Uh, and medical director, sir, you're muted. You're muted, sir. Please unmute yourself. Okay. In today's webinar, there are many questions to be addressed. For instance, what do we understand by suicide? What is suicide itself? And what is deliberate self harm? Is there any difference between the two? What are the risk factors that can lead to suicide? How do we prevent suicide and address the stigmatization associated with suicide? To address these issues, today are seasoned experts in the field. The first speaker for today is Dr. Richard Adeban Ademola Adebayo. Dr. Richard Ademola Adebayo is a consultant psychiatrist, special grade one, and he is in charge of old age psychiatry in the hospital. He had his basic medical degree, Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery from the Obafemi Maolo University, Ilefe, and a fellowship of West African College of Physicians in Psychiatry. He obtained postgraduate diploma in hospital management and master's in, uh, master's in science in clinical psychology from the University of Lagos. Dr. Adebayo has been at various time head of clinical services and acting MD of this hospital. Currently, he is the head of geriatric psychiatry and the head of social and transcultural research group in the hospital. Dr. Richard Adebayo was also involved in some studies genetic study on schizophrenia and clozapine band study from US, as well as lifestyle and mental health from the United Kingdom. He is a mental health advocate and public health educator. Our second speaker in today's program is an erudite professor. His name is 
Professor Oladapo Benjamin Oli. Professor Oli is a clinical and health psychology at the prestigious University of Ibadan. He's a professor of professors. He has published widely and supervised more than 10 PhD students and several students with master's degree. Four of his PhD supervisees are already professors in some universities. Professor Oli has traveled widely and published profusely with strong index factor and more than 3,000 citations of his work. Professor Oli is a licensed clinical psychologist and a registered member of Nigerian Association of Clinical Psychologists. He is also a mental health advocate and a public educator. Join me this morning to welcome my guest speaker into our midst. I urge you to kindly relax and listen to our mental health expert as we promise you a rewarding session of today's webinar. Over to you, Dr. Kemi Akito Yese. Thank you, Medical Director, for that arousing welcome. Uh, he had already told us what we will be discussing today. And what we are talking about is suicide, stemming the tide and creating hope through action. If there is a better time to talk about anything, this is one of the conversations that we should keep going because we need to create hope. And then how can we create hope? It's by action, not by words. So we are moving from mere words today to real action. And he had told us that we have erudite scholars, people who are very knowledgeable on the field, who will be talking to us about this very important discussion for today. Now, please, if you know someone who needs to be here, please just reach out to them that we had from as a webinar for this month. They don't have to reward. They need to can be a part of the live show. So please let them come. And also remember that we have, um, we are streaming live on Facebook, as well as also that we have advantage of sending questions and comments on the chat box. So if you have a question, you have a comment, you have something that you need clarity about, please understand that you can send your question in while this webinar is going on currently. And so we're moving on in the discussion, and then I'm going to invite Dr. Adebaya to quickly tell us what is suicide? And again, why do people commit suicide? Sometimes you wonder, as much as life is difficult, Excuse me, I want to enjoy life. So, Dr. Debayo, what is suicide and why do people commit suicide? Thank you, Dr. Akito Ishe. I take it from where you stopped that um, uh, people need to enjoy life. No wonder why a multinational organization said life is good, and that's the name of that organization. So, life is good, and um, when he's getting to the level that people don't see life as being good again, then it should be a concern. So suicide is a public health concern, a major public health concern worldwide. It's a topical issue, and it's what we need to spend more time to talk about because um, uh, every minute, one life or more than that is being lost as a result of suicide. So suicide. It originated from the word, uh, Latin word called suicidio. Uh, and it just simply means that act of taking one's life when an individual made deliberate effort to end his or her life. Uh, people are already used to that phrase of uh, committing suicide. As psychiatrists, we don't like using that word, I mean, that phrase of committing suicide uh, because um, is seen from the legal perspective. You know, the law of the land is against someone taking his own life. If the person is not successful, uh, he or she is supposed to be uh, arrested and uh, tried in court. But as head uh, uh, practitioner, we look at it from uh, a different perspective from the legal uh, high. And that's why nowadays we like to uh, avoid that terminology of uh, uh, committing suicide. Okay. so. Simply put, when an individual uh, is getting tired of life and is making efforts or actually made an effort to end his or her life, we say that is suicide. There are other terminologies uh, enunciated stated earlier by our medical director, like deliberate self-harm, attempted suicide, non-fatal uh, suicidal behavior. When an individual has not uh, uh, been successful at ending his or her life, we call it a deliberate self-harm. It can be in different uh, 
modality, you know, slashing one's uh, wrist, ingesting uh, chemicals uh, or sedatives with intention to end one's life, but the person is not successful at, at it. We say that's the uh, or attempted suicide. Uh, we, was, we also take note that um, uh, suicide or deliberate self-harm affects people from all walks of life, from ages, you know. Even in the Bible, we, uh, we, we read cases of people who made efforts who actually ended their lives. It can affect children. And you may be wondering, children, why would children want to die? Yes, there are a lot of teenagers, adolescents now nowadays who end their lives. Some because um, uh, love went awry. Uh, did not go well. And then the next thing they think of is ending their lives. It can affect people, you know, even in a, a geriatric age group, elderly people who are going to look at some of those uh, risk factors as time goes on. But I just want to mention here that uh, when suicide is not uh, successful, that is deliberate self-harm or attempted suicide, we discover that more females are affected than males. But completed one that is suicide, of course, the patient is no longer with us. Men, are, males are more affected than females. So we can see it affects people from all walks of life, uh, uh, both uh, genders and um, uh, age groups, not, none is exempted. Maybe except infants and um, uh, people less than 10 years old, it may be very rare. But adolescents, teenagers, especially people uh, uh, age 18 to about um, uh, 45, we discover that um, uh, suicide is a, one of the leading cause of deaths among this age group. And, and it's uh, a thing that we should always talk about to see how we can help a lot of people to overcome that. Over to you, Dr. Akinto Ishii. All right. We're sorry about that speech. Okay, um, sorry. Um, the network is playing a bit of prank, but don't worry, we would go on. Um, we are better than all of this network. Okay. All right. So, Dr. Debayo, thank you. But you know one, one thing that caught my attention from what Dr. Debayo said is the fact that he said it affects all people from all walks of life. So that means nobody seemingly, except for maybe infants, are uh, immune from um, suicide. And then again, he said, and then it, that one was what caught my heart. He said, more females, excuse me. Ah, hey, okay. Oh, how would they deliver the liver? The liver to do that. <laughs> but okay, we will still get to that because he said he's going to talk to us about the risk factors and then we'll get to know why and some of those things. But then we'll move on in the discussion and then Professor Oli will be talking to us about what are the warning signs? Okay, so how do we know? Because sometimes you will see somebody very rich and then the next thing they will say, next day he has thrown himself from the roof of his house or he just hangs rope and died. How do we know? What are the things that we see that will make us to know that oh, there is a problem somewhere? Over to you, Professor Oli. Um, identifying or observing signs in people at the risk of committing suicide um, depends on how well or how hard we have to know this person. Aside uh, medical conditions and uh, mental conditions that will necessarily predispose or maybe at, uh, make them to be susceptible to suicide, when you begin to notice a downplaying of an um, activity level of individuals and a rather exciting is changing more, particularly after a magnitude of problem. There is a reaction to, to a loss, a big loss of something. And the, the magnitude of the loss, the internalization of the loss, as a matter of fact, are one of the uh, behaviors that makes people to want to commit suicide. I have said that. More importantly is that when you begin to see a mood a sudden marked differences in the mood of a person, particularly 
this mood is being accompanied by certain conversations. And you see these conversations around a particular theme of hopelessness and or what psychologists called land helplessness. And after exhausting many coping ability using coping resources to probably adapt or adjust the life loss or a threat to life, a threat to survival. And it's as if you are no longer in a position to continue. And then you now begin to plan suicide. To take one's life is not something that is done in a day. If people plan a suicide. And one of the signs is if you are very observant, is to observe the marked change in behavior, marked change in conversations, and going into certain and things that will, that will make your life variable. You go into reckless driving, reckless and, and risk behavior, safe sex, and you start to drink alcohol, and you start to sleep. You, you, you begin to exhibit conversations around worthlessness and hopelessness of life, and and so on and so forth. You might begin to, to especially if it affects some status, like maybe you are a big man, a CEO, for example, and you suddenly be writing or speaking of legal uh, ways of transferring your property, writing in will. Now want to have an insurance uh, a cover, dead insurance cover, and then you start to deliberately plan to injure yourself and trying to adjust to certain things, self injury, self harm, and then uh, and that is you are testing, you are testing the impact of the weapons of suicide attempts on your body. So when you begin to see all that. And very observant, then these are signs. These are signs that you will You also observe in people maybe isolating themselves, refusing to engage in those activities that they would normally enjoy. Um, friends will ask to accept the community group. And you know, people need to work with their group with them. And they observe you, they see that there is this blunt or perhaps maybe even perfect, the mood is not happy, and then you look for us. And there is no existing or precipitating medical condition or mental condition, they know. And they now begin to suspect you. Though in most cases, people don't, people that are not really. They and colleagues, people that are not you know, friends, people that are not family members, they don't notice this. But when you see this, this changes in one's personality, then you begin to suspect that yes, this person is like to take up his life or to head up his life. You, you may have talked about it to some people, you may have discussed it in a very covert way. Suspecting way to some people, but if you if you're a color person, that is very clear. That is definitely something is about to happen. And people, the passive body, now I want they 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 see they see their life condition as body some others, and then when they perceive this. Okay, um, uh, we lost them. Um... That is the perception of body okay, people. Right? They might need to, they, they don't okay. people coming around to, to uh, sympathize with you about the loss of something, or maybe you are you know, you lost your job for some time, and then uh, you just tell them family member to some friends. And then this internalization of the guilt and shame will probably need it. Lost one job, lost one job. 
these signs are observable to anybody that is that that is there to really observe. And then it's it 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 is a behavior around conversations, expression of worthlessness, and actually making some deliberate plans, even though it doesn't matter how bad it is, the plans are. And of course, they, they, they always try to, to test using some weapons to test themselves to see how they will absorb the pain of suicide. So these are the little signs that one can, like I said, if it, it's ex particularly when the person has no history of suicide or maybe depression. Because of course, no depression, no suicide adaptation, and they are all part of the pattern. All right, thank you so very much, Professor Oli, for that. What I heard uh, Professor Oli say is that a whole lot of times uh, when people, for an individual, will carry out the acts of um, committing suicide, you would find out that there are some signs, or a lot of times we are not so conversant with the signs, or we don't even take note of it because most of them tend to mask their behavior. Or well, even as subtle as it is, uh, there is a change in mood. There, there is a change in behavior. There is a withdrawal that comes. Uh, there is a learned helplessness of feeling, or they talk about being hopeless and helpless. And these are some of the things that you can see. But some of them also, there is a few of cel deliberate self harm And these are things that we can begin to take notice of that would help us to understand that um, this individual might be having um, some of these issues. And if, if we are conversant enough, we will see them. But a lot of time, it's masked. And now we would go over to um, Dr. Adebayo. Who is going to tell us the risk factors are associated with suicide? Because we need to know. If we do not know, how can we prevent this from happening ever again? All right, so Dr. Debayo, over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Akinto Ishe. And I really enjoy uh, Professor uh, for uh, shedding more lights um, uh, in the earlier discussion. For us to understand the, those risk factors, I guess we also need to know that uh, suicide is not just an individual thing most of the time. Uh, and it's not just an individual uh, uh, that will perpetrate it. Sometimes, we have most of the cases, we yes, in an individual, oh, this person has died by suicide or whatever. Sometimes it involves a lot of people. And uh, 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 just before I go to that, those risk factors, I also need to talk about uh, what Emil Dockey, uh, a researcher did years back, and uh, categorized uh, suicide into four types. Uh, 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 the, this researcher look at it as egoistic. That in this category of people, uh, that the, this type of suicide, there's absence of social integration. So usually, uh, 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 some people consider themselves, and the society look them as outcasts, and they are usually, you know, denigrated, and they they they, they feel lonely and rejected. Just come put to your mind the Oshu case in the southern part years back that people who are seen as lesser human beings like that, some of them see uh, 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 suicide as a, a way of escape. Of course, there's also a altruistic type of suicide in which there's a lot of social group involvement that people uh, uh, are, are so embedded, involved, enmeshed in the uh, uh, doctrines, so to say, or ideologies of their groups. So we hear of the suicide bombers. Uh, these people, they, they are not the only one that, uh, uh, that will exit the world. They ensure that they take as many people as possible, unwilling people anyway, you, you, to, to, to death. You can re recall what happened at the World Trade Center in the United States about a decade ago. And then we hear of uh, people like uh, uh, Boko Haram, uh, suicide bombers. They are not the only one that die in the process. They kill others too. So just to tell you that, you know, there must be reason why it, what, what makes people like this to, to behave like that, to tend towards that? And of, of course, so religious people too, because we are going to look at these risk factors too. Religiously, uh, uh, I, religious ideologies. Uh, uh, what comes to one's mind uh, uh, about Jim Jones years back, who ensured that his followers uh, 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 ended their lives in order to make it to heaven. More recently in Kenya, we heard of Paul Ntense Mackenzie, that pastor, who ensure that uh, through his, uh, a religious ideology ensure that over 300 members of his church were, were asked to go to a remote area in the forest and they stabbed themselves to death, including 
children. So you can see how the magnitude of suicide can be. So we, we, we need to look at all these types. Anomic types are, you know, especially in the days we are, we are, we are now, you know, where there's a lot of uh, stress, you know, affecting a lot of people because that's part of the risk factor we are going to see, okay? Uh, COVID-19 fallouts, businesses were, 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 were put mail down. The, a lot of people, they lost their jobs, they lost their means of livelihood, and they felt that, no, there was no way, they, they felt they have hit the, the wall. And a lot of them, you know, embraced suicide. Some lost assets, some lost money through stock exchange when it collapsed and all that, and they could not face realities of life again. And then they felt, unfortunately, that suicide would be the way of life. What a fatalistic, that's the fourth type too, you know? Especially what comes to mind, let me give an example, you know, celebrities, people who, 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 who are social media influencers, entertainers, who felt they, were, they must live a certain high kind of life, you know, high level of life, high standards, so to say, kind of right streets. And when they could not meet up, the next is out of shame and all that, they consider uh, a suicide. That's fatalistic type. So we, we, even though this theory was propounded years ago, but we can see the reality of it in our lives, in our situations, in our society nowadays. So the risk factors, we can look at them as biological and psychological risk factors. Professor Ali mentioned earlier a uh, uh, previous episode of suicide attempt. When an individual has made an attempt in the past, that's a very strong risk factor that this person, <laughs> God forbid, next attempt. The next attempt may be successful. Initially, it may not be successful. That's why you call it attempted suicide or deliberate self-harm, but next attempts may be more dangerous. And that's why we should not uh, 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 trivialize when an individual is making an attempt, or we should not just you know, wave it off as a malingering or whatever, uh, seeking for attention. Yes, maybe seeking for attention, but it may take it too far next time. So previous history of suicidal attempts is very key. Mood disorders, yes. Especially depression. Depression accounts for 80% of all types of suicide. When you hear that, oh, this is the figure of people who have died. Yes, researchers have told us that up to 80% was a result of depression. But it's not only depression that is the only mood disorders. What of uh, anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders? These are also some of the risk factors. And of course, certain uh, mental uh, uh, disorders like post-schizophrenic depression. Schizophrenia is a major psychotic disorder. And when the patient, after a lot of uh, suffering and all that, has now gained what we call the insight, it's a way of this problem, and look back and knows that he has lost or she has lost so much in life as a result of the, the severity, the body of this uh, disorder, that person may want to think of, of the way of suicide in order to, 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 to to face that, to, to, to live this life, okay? Uh, personality traits too, uh, especially borderline personality. People will say who are borderline personality disorders. They tend to have mood swings here and there and the thought of any of their lives easily comes to their mind. So people like this are also having the increased risk of coming down with mental disorder. Uh, alcohol and substance use disorder, those who take, uh, uh, um, Psychoactive drugs, cocaine, marijuana, heroin, amphetamines, tramadol. After a while, when they look back to it and they realize that they've lost a lot in life, not only in terms of uh, a, a social relationships, social connectedness, but even their businesses, their education, everything has um, you know, gone down. Sometimes they felt that uh, the, 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 the easy way, unfortunately, is to end their lives. Family history of suicide is also important. Yes. Suicide can run in a family. Yes, uh, you, you may say maybe it's a cause or whatever, but scientifically, we know that um, it can run in a family and we need to uh, do a lot of research in that area. History of trauma or abuse, post-traumatic stress disorder, early childhood abuse, sexual abuse, bullying in school and all that. All this it may eventually make an individual to have high risk of um, uh, ending his or her life. Anything that leads to hopelessness, helplessness, worthlessness, you know, extreme trauma and all that can lead to that, you know, chronic debilitating and uh, unremitting the, the physical diseases, especially terminal disease like cancer or other chronic uh, dis medical conditions that leads to severe pains can make an individual to say, oh, this is even more preferable than to continue to suffer. Well, it shouldn't be like that, but we know that these are the issues, these are the things that can also uh, be 
part of the, 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 the biological and psychological uh, uh, factors. And also domestic abuse. A lot of women are, are, are victims of domestic abuse and they, they pass through this and uh, after a while they get tired and they want to end their lives. Well, there are also that social, cultural and environmental factors, lots of job unemployment, sudden financial laws, certain cultural and religious um, practices. Yes, I mentioned altruistic uh, uh, suicide uh, earlier, uh, you know, uh, in Japan, for example, there, 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 there was this word of harakiri. The people used to talk about harakiri, that someone had commit, had, has done harakiri. That means the person felt that, oh, uh, this thing, this situation is shameful. The best thing is to end it all, you know? Uh, and they want to, to they, they want to end their lives, you know? They, they disemboed themselves with a sword in the, in the past. But it still happened in some uh, uh, areas in the, among the Hispanics uh, uh, nowadays. Also, you see, when people have easy access to later means, you know, in Nigeria, when people talk about um, sniper and all that, you know, it becomes so popular. And so an individual will feel that ah, it's not so difficult to get it from a shop there nearby. You know, when there's easy access, yes. When there's barrier to access to healthcare too, it can make an, it's also a risk factor, you know. It, one that is debatable is media exposure. People feel that when we talk about uh, 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 suicide, it can make some people to now think of suicide. That is really controversial. It's not, it's not really clear cause that um, it, it can uh, lead to uh, suicide, but some people have um, uh, looked into that. So uh, uh, I, I, uh, before I conclude, I also want to talk about the religious ideologies and all that. Uh, I mentioned earlier the example in Kenya. You may say Kenya is far away. Uh, I think it was last year or early this year, somewhere in the Kiti, somewhere in the Kiti state, that a pastor told his members that um, they should uh, be ready for, uh, what is it now, rapture. And then those people, they sold their properties, they left their jobs, they went to one time in the, in the Kiti and they were expecting rapture. Well, what does that mean? They will starve themselves to death. Thank God that um, uh, uh, the, the, the government uh, is able to come in on time. This also happened sometimes not too long ago in Londo State that a pastor gathers some members of his church to an underground area, a, a basement of the church. And, uh, and uh, uh, by the time those people were rescued, some of them were already you know, in, in terrible physical conditions. You, in one way or the other, that's a form of uh, suicide too. And then we need to be very careful of uh, our religious ideology. It's good for us to trust God, to, to know about God. But when we are now the one hastening rapture, when God has not called anybody for rapture, and the person is now the one hastening it, that's a form of suicide. And if, we need to be more careful about that. Thank you so very much, sir. Um, that was the main. And you know, as Dr. Debayo was talking, uh, I recall an incident that happened some years back. Mine wasn't, um, I, I didn't want to die, but it was like a suicidal attempt too, because I didn't want to go to school again. And uh, they told us that rapture will soon happen. And so we were not reading our math. But you know, I said math like anything. And then by the time the exam came, rapture did not take place. Uh -huh, I failed, you. <laughs> but that was a suicidal mission because hey, I was beaten. I was beating like any other thing. But you know, what we're talking about today is very germane to our function because a lot of ideology, yes, people also want escape. And you know, society is just an escape out of the problem, out of the pain that an individual seems they can't get help from. And so a whole of time they want to escape it. So I have a way. So sometimes when people come with different ideologies, they just want to follow suit and just do whatever it is that um, they are being to. Thank you so very much for Dr. Debayo for expounding that for us so that we can better understand it. But he had been able to tell us about the psychological as well as the, the biological um, factors that could serve as risk factors. And if you would have agreed with me that the risk factors so much in our environment now is a, more of the psychological and then the social. Some few weeks ago, a woman dropped her child in the, in the, in, in the ocean, in the, um, what's it called, in a lagoon or stream, now a river. Thank God the people were there to rescue. And you know, when they were interviewing her, what she said was, oh, the child has lived, apparently, this child has a name, so he had lived long enough. So I was like, wow, you know, you can't imagine a whole lot of things that might be going on in our own mind too. Uh, maybe ability not to be able to cope and face the world again. Now, just trying to, you know, and Dr. Debayo had also told us that sometimes it's not just about the individual. Sometimes they carry a lot of people along with them, even in 
their suicidal mission. Uh, again, thank you so very much, Dr. Debayo. Professor Holly, we're coming back to you. Uh, Professor Holly, please, you will just help us to adjust the of your microphone so that you could speak directly into the mic and then we'll be able to hear you clearly uh, subsequently. So let's look at what are the protective factors um, that you know, we can use to prevent suicide in our environment. We have the risk factors, but are there protective factors that we can use to you know, deal with suicide in our environment? Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, um, our able moderator. Uh, when we talk about protection or protective factors, we, we are considering those things that we would rather not make certain things happen. Something that can shield us, that will, that will prevent another terrible situation to happen. And that will involve, and to what extent we give a feedback or we respond to people's problems. Or how do we attenuate? or ask someone to reduce the burden, the psychological burden he or she might be going through. Every of protective factors can be considered. Number one, at the micro level, which is, which has to do with the family. That is the primary unit where anybody comes from. Number two is to consider things in the environment. When we talk about environment, we're talking about and we're talking about social cultural belief systems in our environment. Unfortunately, today, we are not so that um, altruistic when it comes to assisting people. Maybe as a result of our own body as well. And our own and then resistance level to issues. But some people have strong personality wise but some people are also weak so the strong should be the ones to protect the weak the fact that you are going to be experiencing certain things and you are not reacting to it doesn't mean that somebody else is not taking that predicaments and what people are going through uh, Professor, o Professor Holly, sir. People. Professor Holly, sorry, can you can you please maybe raise your mic so that we can we can hear you? The the mic, no, the hear the the, the hear piece here. All right, this so that we can hear you. This particular one is fluctuating and then you're going on and off. The mouthpiece, um, not yes, sir. That's yes. So maybe we could just put it close to your mouth so that we can hear you clearly. Thank you, sir. Is right, it better now? Oh, is it, correct. Is it better? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 okay, you. okay. So, 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 like I was saying, they are divided into the two categories. Number one is the micro level, and it is the family. There's something that I term sound family health, sound family mental health. A, a family that exudes happiness, good child rearing practices. A child, a family that gives good feed, uh, feedbacks, recognition, phrases. A child, a, a family that is not in the disharmony. If a, a rather functional family is a protection, is a, is a protective factor in attenuating or reducing any stress or any burden that you might be passing through in life. Unfortunately, we don't have such fa such families are dwindling. Now, in terms of their perhaps responsibility, they are they are they are too involved in their own personal things that they don't even want to look at you any longer. If a child develops from such a family, a family that is not even caring, a family that is not bothered, a family that is in disarray, a family in the disharmony, a family with serious a family with some, some good child rearing pattern. They call it discipline, but at times not all discipline should be correctly good for the child. And the fact that if I have a body and I can't turn to them, it's a 
take their family to collect social support. But there are some families that the fact that I have a, a, a father as a governor, or my father is a CEO, or a minister, a legislator, that doesn't mean in a time of adversity, it will be there. If there is no development of love in such family, in fact, I'll be afraid even talking to him because I already know what he's going to say. As a matter of fact, I may rather keep my boat in and decide to jump inside the lake for me to go and meet him that I have a problem because I already know how he's going to react to my problem. So to be, one of the protective factors is to have a sound family. If you look at the, the systemic and interpersonal model of psychopathology, the centers of psychopathology of the weak, the weakling in the group, that's a family. That person is just carrying the body of the entire family system. They have got dysfunctional. But the most vulnerable individual in that family is the one that is carrying the body. It may result into drug addiction, it may result into so many psychopathologies, and everybody will start blaming instead of them to see that we cause this problem in this child. And so the blame game. And the child begins to internalize such uh, um, game. And they begin to talk to people outside. They begin to narrate or relate with people outside. And unfortunately, if such people outside are giving me the wrong feedback, he will likely commit suicide. Don't forget that suicidal behavior is aggression only word. Violent only word. They've been going through like a pent up emotions. It is there, you can't express it. Nobody to express it to. Everybody is completely blocked. There's no neatness in the family system. You can't talk to anybody, you can't talk to friends, you can't talk to and, and, and the mother, father. Some children cannot even talk to their parents on anything, on any issue. They can't confide in their parents on any issue. So they suffer the problems alone. They go through the negative life events alone, the stressful life events alone, and they, and, and and of course they take action. Nobody does they be solving their problems. Nobody is there to make decisions for them. So the first protective factor that we must take very serious uh, is the family unit, the family mental health. A happy family will definitely produce a child that is. Very strong. Number two, it has to do with the social cultural belief systems. When we are growing up, and if a child, if a mother probably maybe rush up, and then so the mother to provide for the child, that child will not stay hungry. Everybody within the neighborhood to rally around. We used to be our brother's keeper. That culture is is struggling day by day. But the problem is because of economic issues. And the other one is issue of suspicion. People are no longer altruistic. People don't help people any longer. As a result, the rather protective cultural belief system that, 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 that enriches our environment is no longer there. Like they are no longer collective. They have this individualistic or individualism that operates in most European countries. The rate of suicide in European countries is, is simply because you are your own. Your life is your, just on your own. You can only relate with devices, applications, not human beings any longer. But here we still have that rich culture of relating with one another. Look at people's door. Please, I need this, I need that. Those cultural values, those cultural um, systems are, are going down day by day. And it's affecting the issue of committing suicide. Addition. Professor Ali, I will have to cut you here, sir, because of our time. <sighs> I'll have to cut you here, sir. I'm very sorry, Professor Holly. I'll have to cut you here.
All right, thank you so very much, sir. Yeah, but you know what I have heard Professor Holly talk about so much is a family bond and unity. Uh, you know, it, it goes back to the fact that we need one another. You need somebody to talk to. You need somebody to help carry your burden. And I love the fact that Professor Holly said the social cultural belief system where everybody has to be a part of it. It's not just an individualized thing. But unfortunately, for all of us, seemingly protective factor it seems to be eroding it seems to be like something is it's it's happening and it's just bringing it out and maybe that's why we are having a whole lot of problems because this so-called protective factors are not there again in our society so hardly with someone from the family unit i love it it says sound family you know members you no know, mentoring and every other thing good hearing practices you recognize you praise a child you you are you're deliberating in, in raising up you allow them to go through their problems and then you allow them to also solve it and then move on and these are very important things that professor I only had really identified for us but because of our time we need to move on and i'm going to call dr debayo who is going to talk how do we stem the tide yes in our environment how do we create hope excuse me sir a lot of people are hopeless hmm. rice is now fifty thousand. you don't know how much our salary is that we are buying rice fifty thousand. our bigger are not oil how do we create hope? How do we stem the tide? People are not able to achieve. You know, we know self-actualization is very important, but people are not actualizing. So how do we stem the tide and create hope? Moving beyond words to action. Dr. Debye, over to you, sir. Well, thank you for telling us, that, uh, talking about how do we create hope, or rather, renewed hope. How do we renew hope? Well, I think we are in the dispensation of renewed hope politically. And uh, we pray that it will also transcend to even the health sector uh, uh, and all other aspects of our lives. Uh, Professor Oli has made the work easier for me by looking at the family uh, perspective, and they have spent so much time on that. Uh, I will talk about the individual. The, the, how can individuals stem the tide? Family, have they, they also have roles to play. That's the, 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 the foundation. The, the, the blocking, the building blocks of the society. He has talked about that, our professor. Individual factors, I'm going to look at that. Also look at the community, the society, as well as the government. But let me look into the individual factors more. Individuals, we've talked about those risk factors. It's not just enough to say, oh, it's not my portion in, in Jesus' name. It's not anybody's portion. For adventure, you, you, you need to know about your personality traits or types so that you know if you are vulnerable or are you genetically predisposed. It doesn't mean that you will have it, but it's not just enough for us to wave it off. Are you undergoing stressful life events? And then you need to do something. You need to adjust and adapt to your life. You know, we, we need to look at it as individuals that we are not running race with anybody. It's not rat race. You are running your own race. So you can't equate yourself with others. We need to understand that in, there's ideal self according to Carl Rogers and the, 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 the real self, ideal self and real self. Sometimes the, 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 the way we envisage though our lives will be, we we'll achieve this as we age and we we'll make it, we we'll get it to this level. In reality, sometimes it may not really uh, 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 fall in like that. It, 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 there may be a gap. When there's a gap, then the individual may have tendency to start looking frustrated and all that. We should understand that life goes on. We should not use other people's yardstick for ourselves. So we must be able to understand ourselves. Professor talked about suicide is aggression turned inwards. And we know also it can also be turned outwards to others when an individual involves others. Even if it's turned inward, the, the people that also bear the brunt are the family members left behind. By the, by, the, by the main uh, victim, so to say. So we should look at individual factors. Is it possible that an individual can come for assessment uh, when you know you have passing through a lot of challenges in life, depression here and there, and some other conditions? Yes, you can come. For example, we can know if an individual is close to <laughs> the precipice of suicide. You know, what, 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 what we call the, the mystery triad, you know, according to the big five personality traits. So we can do some psychological assessment to really know if somebody is getting to that level. For example, if the score on the area of neuroticism is high 
and the score in the area of consciousness and extraversion or extroversion is low, then that person has high, in, high tendency and something can be done. Psychotherapy can be done at that stage. What I'm trying to say is that you're having some challenges, you don't know what you are passing through again, come for assessments. And it doesn't mean that it has to be medication, you know? Psychotherapy can help such people to navigate through the challenges of life. Is it midlife crisis? Is it marital disharmony? All these things have solutions. Suicide cannot just be a reasonable, a realistic solution. No, not at all. And you may say, oh, what of uh, people have chronic uh, physical conditions? Yes, access to healthcare is part of it, which government also needs to do. But we are still looking at these individual factors. You must be able to learn how to relax, how to take life easy, how to cut your coats according to your uh, 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 coping capacity. Not only just your finance, your coping capacity. It's not every every problem you can solve of others. You, we must be able to know realistic way of solving our problems. Problem solving skills, solutions uh, skills, not just by, oh, there's a problem, the next is start puffing and start smoking and start drinking yourself to stupor. That will eventually lead to a, a big trouble. So as individuals, we must learn how to help ourselves so that we are not close to the edge of the cliff of suicide. So that's very, that's very important uh, for, for us to understand. Uh, also, uh, the, the community to the society, they also have a role to play. And I want to em emphasize on our religious uh, organizations and all that, who create hope for us, who, 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 who lay emphasis on utopia and all that, we should understand. Uh, especially also those who are close to that motivational speakers and everybody must make it the prayer of everybody must make it yes we pray we'll make it but we should know that it is it, 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 it may not be exactly the same time some people will say turn by turn well it may be turn by turn it's god that answers prayers we cannot boss god to a corner to answer our prayers so we direct our our prayers our requests unto god we should not be anxious but we should, with prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, made our request known unto God. Whatever religion we, we practice, we should be able to have that kind of reasonable, rational faith. And not that, no, 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 miracle, no, 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 no. And when people are not getting those miracle, no, 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 they are frustrated. And you, will not, you may not see them in your congregation again. So our, 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 our churches, our religious organizations, where you are teaching us faith to focus on God, we must be very careful how we drive people so that we don't overdrive them onto early deaths through suicide. So it's important. NGOs, Rotary Clubs, Lions Clubs, they should also be interested in this area because suicide is an area that everybody wants to shy away from because of the stigma associated with it. But people can really come together. Organizations can also come to give support to people. Oh, we just lost Dr. Debayo there. Um, network issues, so sorry, we're quite apologize for that. Um, I'm sure he's going to come back uh, very soon and it's going to wrap up uh, his closing thoughts. Why they deal with that uh, would go back to um, Professor Holly. Uh, Professor Holly is going to talk to us about how do we build resilience, and then we'll now take Dr. Debayo. Okay, Dr. Debayo is back. Dr. Debayo, yes. can I hear you? All right, go I'm on. sorry for the technical age. I was just talking about uh, NGOs, religious organizations, uh, and individual. We are ready. Uh, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, we are ready to help people who are in need. Either as individual or, or your organization, you are bringing people who need help. Instead of gossiping about them, instead of for stigmatizing them, let's help. Let's be our brother's keeper. When you bring them to us, we assure you that we are not going to look down at anybody. We are not going to stigmatize anyone. We are going to see how we can help people. And government too. Government needs to do a lot in the area of uh, youth uh, uh, empowerment. A lot of our youth are frustrated. Government needs to build inf human infrastructures, human empowerment. You know, we need to help our people, socioeconomic issues are not smiling at anybody, and we need help in this area. And the government also needs to curb excesses of religious organizations, also need to curb excesses of uh, social media. 
that is creating a lot of problems for people today. And of course, so we need to uh, do a lot to curb drug abuse. Uh, because of time, I just want to stop uh, this production. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Debayo, for that um, a very, very, you know, elucidating um, information that you have given to us about how to deal with this. And I love the fact that you mentioned that a Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, we are ready to help you. Come in, walk into the premises. We don't stigmatize. We don't make you feel, why should you? No, people would always say, why, why do I have that? People would ask me, why do I have that? It doesn't matter. Come. We're very open-minded, and then we have professionals who will be able to help you to deal with this. And he had mentioned individual level, the community, the religious level, the NGO, even at the governmental level. Yes, everybody has a role to play. It will worst stem the tide of suicide and create hope through action. Now, be a soldier that somebody will lean on, be a rest for somebody. Now, lastly, we just go on to Professor um, Oli, who is going to tell us in a few minutes, how do we build resilience? Now, a lot is happening around us, and we are not sure that we are getting out of it. In, in, we started in 2020, we are still here. We haven't gotten out. How do we build resilience? Over to you, sir, Professor Oli. Individuals are confronted with them. With the rather Together in Professor Oli, we can't hear you. Maybe speak into the mic, sir. We can't hear you. Speak into the mic. The, the mic is this bob, sir. The bob. Can, the bob you on the. You know. Yes, you? now we can hear you now, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Like I said earlier, we are all in Nigeria together and and then we are facing a common problem. But the reaction, the way, the way we react to things is, 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 is a function of a personality trait called resilience. Resilience simply means the ego strength, the strength in us to be able to carry and weather a situation. If a thing builds it, it's a personality trait. And this personality trait is built right from the beginning. In other words, as a child, A function of ability to cope, use the resources that God has given us, and how do we effectively put those coping resources into use? In other words, our coping ability is also part of faith. So people don't know how to cope with issues. People don't, don't know how to solve. So people don't know how to solve problems. That problem solving deficits, becoming decisions, is part of the. Research. Saying, how do we develop this? It is developed from childhood. It's part of the childhood system. If you look at the entire Erickson theory of psychosocial development, the, the crisis that we face and how the parents, parental figures, are really assist the child to overcome or take through such situations, those crises are facing. If you are very skillful in, in assisting that child to make uh, or assisting that child to overcome the problems by teaching him certain skills, you are indirectly teaching that child the problem solving skills. So, so being underprotective, underprotector, and underprotective of a child, not giving them free hand to operate, is is part of the resilience development. Most children are not streetwise. Most children don't face. Life issues the way they ought to. We present life to them as a land flowing with milk and honey, just like the most of the countries in Israel. Uh, Dr. Adebayo mentioned how religion or motivational speakers have more or less confused many of the young ones. In other words, Christ himself said that um, I have overcome in this world. Which are faced tribulation. He didn't say that because he has died on the cross, there will be no problem. Problem will still come. Now, how do we handle problem? Your, your handling of your problem depends on number one, your coping resources. How resilient? What is your ego strength? Or are you ego defective? If you are ego defective, then you'll be able to solve any little problem. Therefore, if you are confronted with life exigencies and this negative life. Suicide or do some um, things that are not 
are not um, uh, things that are for mental health. So your coping ability, your coping strength, your personal your resilience, and strength. So we're going to come and see it. We all go through life problems. There are stages of life problems even in old age, starting from trust and mistrust, building the virtues of will, building the virtues of purpose, build, uh, building the virtue of, 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 of isolation, building the virtue of hope. They are all part of the resilience. Altruistic traits in individuals are part of the resilience. So everything within you that will make you face life and adapt to life, adjust to life, squarely, without necessarily creating unnecessary mental health issues for yourself, they are all part of your resilience. And like I said, it's built right from the beginning, right from the brain, right, right when the child is between zero and two, up till the stage of this year and way up. The stage of care, all these things are part of the resilience that will take a man through life and death. So it's simple. The family issue to be resilient. Yeah. That will make anybody to face life and enjoy life in happiness. Thank you very much. Hey, no. Thank you so very much, um, Professor Oli, for that. You know, he, he, what I've heard him say to us is it's something that you need to build up. Build it up from childhood, let the child go through life, let them understand the roadmap, let them be able to confront their challenges, let them be able to deal with their problems, and then they would be able to come out broadly and then face anything. But when you show them too much, you will find out that they are not prepared for the world, and then we need to prepare our children for the world. As a matter of fact, everybody. But you know, sometimes you are not prepared to have a journey to, like this one that we're going through now, we are not prepared. But again, we are bouncing through, and that is a thing. That's the level of, yes, even not this particular one a lot of things that prepared us for where we are now and so we can adequately bounce through and then find our footing at the end of the day we want to appreciate everyone who has been on this call with us now we have so much uh, appreciation and words of encouragement coming in on the platform for our speakers and for the hospital as a whole yes we love and we keep hope that we keep doing so so very much dr adebayo and professor Oli. thank you for putting us to a for putting to us a comprehensive and insightful presentation on this topic, um, suicide, uh, self-awareness. Yes, Tracy Maduke says self-awareness can also help someone to recognize their strengths and weaknesses and seek help to build resilience. Thank you so, so very much uh, for that comment, Professor Badu. We really appreciate you. Thank you for always coming back each time and being with us on the platform. Mrs. Caroline, we appreciate everyone who had been on this call or with us. And Indira, thank you so very much. We appreciate you. We'll take the last word from our presenters, our speakers today, and then it's going to be, we're going to wrap it up. But please note that you can also watch this um, episode again on the YouTube page of the Yabo Voice. We have um, Yabo Voice One Word on the YouTube. You can have access and you can watch, you can share it. Please share. We have said we don't hold any copyright. Just share it, keep sharing. Let people understand the essence of what we are doing is to help people get knowledge. You know, knowledge is so valuable that when people get it, they are uh, they're better. Prof um, Dr. Adebay, your one last word from you um, before we round up, sir. One last word from you on this topic today. Well, uh, suicide is, is a public health concern, a very serious one, and all of us should play our part to ensure that um, we stem the tide. Let's be our brother's keeper, and let's also be mindful of our own health. And I pray that God will see us through. Thank you so very much, Dr. Debayo. Professor Oli, thank you. One last word from you, sir. Well, let's let the family be the family. Your mic, sir, your mic. Yeah. Professor Oli, is that we lost him? Let the family, let the family, let the family. Okay. Let the family okay. Health be at the family is mm. important. Okay. Mm. All right, thank you so very much, um, Professor Oli. Professor Oli has told us the family. The family needs, needs to come together. And I'm sure that um, we have taken note of this as Yabo Voice too, because uh, sooner than later, we'll be doing something about uh, um, the
the family unit as a whole and how we can begin to the, the law of dysfunctionality in the home now and it's we are seeing the ripple effect in our society so thank you so very much we want to appreciate once again our speakers Dr. Adebayo, Dr. Richard Adebayo, Professor Benjamin Oli, thank you so very much for being on this call with us. On behalf of the medical director, Dr. Lubu Ngade Kile and every member of the Yaba Voice team, I want to say thank you for being with us on this call again today. Next month, by the grace of God, we'll be coming up with something better. It happens to be the Mental Health Month. Uh, October 10th, specifically, is the month that mental health is celebrated, and we hope that we will also be looking at something so sad, uh, in line with what the team is or will be for, for that day. And then we would hope that, yes, we would also bring something knowledgeable that will improve your mental health functioning. And until we come your way again, please understand that your mental health is a priority. So keep working to ensure that you stay stable and navigate all that you need to do. Don't forget, we need to build resilience to be able to move on effectively. So thank you so very much for being on this call. Take care of yourself. Bye. That's good.